Mike Breen just called his 100th NBA Finals game last night, joining us from the Denver airport. How are you feeling, Mike? Well, every time I come here, this is one of the most extraordinary places in the entire world, the Denver airport. Ooh. The, the magnitude of, the, of the, the place, the amount of people, yet somehow it works, I, I, I can't understand it. It really is It's one of the great wonders of the world, this place. All right. Well, thank you, Mike. That's all we wanted to know. We appreciate your time, as always. Great to talk to you, Dan. We'll talk soon. Uh, if I, uh, at what point did you realize, like, we had two teams that didn't want, they wanted to be underdogs here. But I don't think... You guys didn't treat either one as an underdog, and I talked to Jeff Van Gundy about this, but did you feel like there was an underdog feel to these two teams in the finals? Not in the finals. I I thought Denver was an underdog team despite having the best record in the West through most of the Western playoffs, uh, just in the perception, because they still had to prove that they they were ready to do that. Uh, But in the finals, after what they did to the Lakers, um, then they were they were no longer underdogs. Miami certainly was, because you look at their roster, um, and I mean it's it's such an admirable team to root for, and they play so hard. And you know the phrase that Eric Spoelstra keep using, the competitive spirit, uh, makes you admire them so much. But they were they were definitely the underdog in that in the finals. What's it say about the sport? That's the fifth different champion we've had in the last five years. I think it's great. Um, you know, we all love the David and Goliath stories when, when one team is dominant and, and they're rooting for somebody to knock them off their perch. But when you go into a, a playoff series, and I can't remember the last time I felt that uh, there were this many teams that had a chance to make the finals. It's just, it's just great. The unpredictability of this year made it one of my favorite seasons just because you didn't know. And even the elite teams... They all had small margins for error. And you normally don't say that about the elite team. And they all had flaws. So you couldn't, you know, definitively say, although that doesn't stop a lot of people, but you couldn't definitively say, that's the best team, or they're going to win the title, because you just didn't know. I'm wondering if the Joker is messing with us. It, like, you're around him, it... it it, it feels like he's having some fun with us, but then I hear the post-game comments. He just wants to go home. He doesn't want to go to a parade or any of that. Uh, is he messing with it or with us, or is that just him? You know, that's a great observation because um, I think you might be right. I, he has so much joy in being with his teammates. And he does seem to enjoy the banter with the media. And I think maybe it's because he knows he's messing with us. I, I can't remember the last time I saw a player who combined, you know, clearly he, he wants to just be with his family. And his teammates have told us that. Uh, you know, they've said when, when the season's over, when practice is over, he just can't wait to get home to his daughter and his wife. And, and that's genuine. Uh, but at the same time, he is so competitive and so loves to win and loves to win because his team is all connected. Um, it's a very interesting combination. Like I thought I watched him and the way he handles himself and the way he talks, you know what? He's going to one day we're going to wake up and he's going to say, I'm done. Yeah. But yeah. then again, he loves that whole team aspect of the sport that he might not want to be done because I think he takes such great enjoyment for that. Yeah. I think he loves the game. I don't think he likes the ancillary stuff and that I could see him one day, like in three or four years, just say, that's it. It's not like Andrew Luck, who was injured and didn't reach the pinnacle playing for a Super Bowl. The Joker's done. He's, you know, two MVPs and he's won a title. He's got five years left on his contract. I wouldn't be surprised if he walked away after that. We're talking to Mike Breen, ESPN, ABC, NBA play-by-play voice. The first time you said bang was when, and where did it come from? On the air or off the air? Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I used to say it off the air uh, when I was a Fordham student. I went to pretty much every Fordham basketball game. Tom Penders was the coach there, and Fordham was good. Um, and I went to all the games, and if a Fordham player hit a shot, I screamed it out in the stand. 
So that's what gave me the thought. Maybe I'll try that on the air when I started doing college radio when I was a student at Fordham. Um, so that's that's the origin of it. And and kind of the reason I stuck with it was because in a big moment when the crowd's going crazy, um, you know, the human voice is really not made to override a crowd. And to try and do that, I don't have one of those great deep baritone voices that some announcers have. But uh, for me to be able to make a concise call and not have to override a crowd and get out of the way and let the crowd enhance the moment, I thought that was a, a good word, nice one-syllable word to say it and get the hell out of the way. I thought that you came into national prominence. It was Steph Curry hitting that deep, deep, deep three against Oklahoma City. That's the first time I felt like it resonated with everybody, basketball fans. Did that Was that significant in your mind when Steph hits that really long three and then you, you gave us a bang? I think not only that one, but a, a, a number of other ones that Steph Curry uh, hit. <laughs> I, I, I feel he's responsible for, for a, a lot of my uh, notoriety, so to speak. And um, no, I, I would agree with that. I think that's another excellent observation. And Although when I, when I hear that call back, Sometimes I just think, who is this screaming fool? Uh, because it, it, I just got so caught up. It really was an out-of-body experience. And it's just, I'm, I love the game so much. And when you see players do these extraordinary things, I, I, I can't help but get crazy and excited because, uh, you know, again, it's just the passion for the game. Uh, Ray Allen's shot, too, was uh, another one that was uh, national landscape stuff. When you, you know, you're doing one with the NBA Finals. Uh, and by the way, I was wondering about this. If you had a shooting contest with you, Mark Jackson, and Jeff Van Gundy, I think I'm taking you. Well, it depends on the range. I have, I don't have three point range, but I'm, I'll stand up to anybody from 17 feet and in of those two. Now, Jeff is sneaky good, sneaky good, and of course, uh, from what I understand, Mark was a player at some point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, I, all three. If you ask the three of us, yeah, who would win? All three of us would say, "Oh, I'd win." All three. This uh, might be. This actually might be a good thing to do. A contest to finally settle it once and for all. I would call it, and I would, uh, you know, whoever hit the game winner, of course, I would yell out, "Bang!" <laughs> I'll do it. I will right, we'll have to get on this. We'll you, have to get on this. This could be. This could be something interesting. Did you get to take part in the celebration last night? Um, I, I feel I did, but just sitting there, uh, we were all saying after the game Now you know, we've had the, uh, the great fortune of being around a lot and seeing a lot of these championship celebrations. That, that was one of my favorites. I, there was just a feeling of, of joy. Um, and you know, when it's the first title ever, it's always something special. Uh, when it hasn't happened in a long time, it's always something special, but there was something about it, and maybe it was because of, of the um, the group that, that won it. They're such a likable group, uh, including the head coach. And, and Michael Malone, I've known since, since I was like 28 years old. Uh, so that was all kind of part of seeing it. But when you see, and I say it every year, though, when, when you see these players act like little kids, you know, there's millionaires who are stars and celebrities, and they just get they get cut down to being little kids jumping for joy. It's um, it's a great, great thing to see. A lot of fun as always. Thank you, Mike. Safe travels back home. All right, Dan. Always a pleasure, bud. That's uh, Mike Breen, play-by-play voice, ESPN ABC. That was the 100th NBA Finals game that he has called. And he's a uh, Hall of Famer. 